that is a heater and it works an awful lot better if you remember to turn it on that means that fan's been on all night because it's set to a cooling temperature for the daytime I forgot to reset it forgot to turn the heater on and that's the consequences luckily it was not a cold night last night but uh, it's been down to, could have been even lower than that. It could have been. Let's have a look. No, it's, it's been down to 10 degrees, so not the end of the world. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately at that temperature, the old uh, humidity done half rocket, I got condensation on the glass. I don't normally get that. It's not far off 100% obviously. So, uh, but I mean, I'm up now, although I've just turned that heater on to film it I'll shut it down now because the door the door will stay open and the heat from the house comes out here and saves my electricity bill but that's twice that mistakes happened and last time it could have been damaging whereas this time not so bad uh, oh well you we can't remember everything I suppose uh. <laughs> I love that the um, the little hydrostat there the humidity's gone up so high it's outside of its range that I've set it to so it just goes ee, can't cope <laughs> uh, love it uh, anyway I, I must get breakfast and that sorted out I've only just noticed that I actually managed to wake up later this morning but uh, let's get this heater off and, and, and get some house heat in here because it's a lot cheaper because I've got that anyway so it saves spending extra money uh, silly mistake, but I um, you know, can't get it right all the time. I did have a busy day yesterday. See you next time. That's the difference. Half an hour with the door open and we're back to normality for this time of day. Very early. Looks like we're going to get a sunny day, so all the gadgets will be on today, no doubt. Um, yeah, I'm pleased with that. It's so powerful that when it's needed, it turns itself on, with the hydrostat obviously, and does the job so fast. Since that was set up, I know it's early in the year, but um, the water's gone down from there to there. And so far I haven't topped it up. You know, even this time of year with the old foggers, you know, they would use most of their water in a day or two and then they'd need refilling. And there was three of them. You know, this is job done with just one. Well pleased with that. Bit expensive, but long term, it should last ages for a start, and it just does the job. <coughs> and it's effectively got two settings. <laughs> that grill on the top is one setting, and the other setting is take it off. I know that sounds daft, but when the hood's on, there is a diffused mist comes out the top. Um, it's still got droplets in it. It's not like a mist as such. It is still very fine particles of water, which is why it does the job so fast. But if you take the top off and let it come straight out the top, it's almost like a fine rain um, and becomes incredibly powerful. You know, the amount of water it can get into the air is, 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 is a lot. <laughs> Uh, turns the place into a rainforest so uh, I think that really is going to do the job and if we are unlucky enough to get a heat wave well lucky for some I suppose if you're on holiday um, but if we get something like that I think I'll be able to cope an awful lot better this year I've still got probably a couple of dozen plants that are still recovering from that heat wave that just didn't like it and it wasn't so much the heat it was the inability to keep up with the humidity during that heat plus no rest from it day after day two and a half to three months worth of that every single day plus no real drop in temperature at night that was you know so it was constant heat very very difficult to cope with we should do better this year anyway um, that'll do for now <laughs> I think I might be doing some repotting today. Not the mounts to water, but it um, doesn't take me long. The actual time to water my mounts is about 40 minutes. But it, in lapse time it takes a lot longer because um, I have to leave things to drip um, before putting them back. 
So I do some until I run out of places for them to hang and drip, you know, like these little places down here where they can drip on the floor and not on other plants. So I have to walk away and let them drip for a bit. Then I can put one lot back and get on with the next lot. So it takes me a couple of hours to get through it, but I'm not in here all the time doing it, if you know what I mean. As I say, it takes about 40 minutes to water all the mounts, and there is a lot of them. <laughs> you saw quite a few of them yesterday yesterday morning's chat <laughs> and that was just the dendrobiums there are other types mounted um, so uh, I might do a video on those you know the non-dendrobium mounted orchids just to show that I do have other varieties of orchids that work well on mounts quite honestly I've been asked many times can I mount this orchid simple answer is if it's an epiphyte then yes the problem being is the maintenance and you know mounts in warm weather are high maintenance daily watering you know if you, if you can't or haven't got the time to do that then they're not the best of ideas for you I mean I've got the time you know I'm retired I'm walking around here trying to find things to do and my orchids give me those things to do so I don't get bored and you know don't have loads of time when I'm sitting around twiddling my thumbs so I'm okay with it but um, you know I know for certainly for working people and that 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 time would be too much you know so you have to go for you know the equivalent potted media you know light and airy or whatever but you know what I mean but quite honestly the only restriction I put on mounted orchids is their sheer size and weight I mean every single cat layer up there could be mounted but with a plant starting that big, actually attaching it to a mount and getting it to be happy quickly is a difficult task. Um, I mean, a lot of orchids react to a change of media, um, and they do stall for a bit, some of them. Depends on the timing, again, you know, if you've got new roots growing, just starting, and you mount it, then those new roots will attach to the mount straight away. But, you know, the there is a limit to what a mount can hold. Um, I mean, this is one of my largest ones, I suppose, that's heavy or heavy-ish. And believe it or not, that's, that's a twinkle. But I mean, that's pushing out one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven new growths. So given the number of old bulbs on there, that's gonna be half as big again during this growing season. It's going to be a large plant, but with those new growths come new roots, it'll attach. At the moment, it's tied on, you know. But that was quite difficult to mount because of, because of its size and weight at the time it was mounted. Once the roots attach, it'll be fine. But, you know, there is a limit to the size. You know, I mean, if you, if you look at some of these, I mean, this plant was so heavy, this had to be wired on. There's no way a couple of bits of fishing line were going to hold that still. So there are limits to what you can do. This huge um, chrysotoxum here, I mean, it could be mounted, but it has an upright growing pattern. It's not a pendulous one. It doesn't naturally hang down like some of the dendrobiums and some others do. Well, mainly the dendrobiums. It's an upright growing plant. And to get that on a mount, you have to sort of stop and think, well, the mount needs to be at the bottom of the plant for a start. And then all of that plant is going to be above the mount. And it's going to be difficult to hold it upright. It's going to want to do that and tip itself away from the mount. And that might not be practical. And to try and hold that upright on a mount that's only secured the plant at the base just isn't going to work. It's too heavy. So th there are some limitations, you know, and that's the sort of thing you have to think about when you're choosing to mount or not. But certainly small to medium sized plants, if they're epiphytes, they'll grow on a mount. Um, you just have to appreciate the workload that's going to go with it. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, yeah, just a quick chat this morning. I, I need to go and get breakfast and more coffee and stuff. Get myself organised for today. Uh, I got Postman Pat to go and see. We have um, oh, packages to. Oops, they've got addresses on. Quick look. 
when I show people's addresses. Oh, I'll just turn them over, that's the easy way, isn't it? Uh, can't show people's addresses, mustn't do that sort of thing. Right, so we have packages to go. We got some, um, this is um, Kiki's, and then the big box underneath is the Vanda. And I've got a horrible feeling when I get round to the little post office that I've got just round the corner, they're not going to be able to take that because it's going to be too big. So that it might cause me a problem today. But um, I'm not going round the post office till the traffic dies down. Get rid of rush hour and then we'll have a pop round there. Those four will go, they won't be a problem. And then I'll ask about this. And if they can't take it, then they can tell me where I can go where they will take it. So hopefully all that lot will be in the post today. And that only leaves one person outstanding, which I'm holding a plant for because it wouldn't take to the transport. It's, it's not established any form of route system and I'm not prepared to post it while it's wobbling around in the pot. Even though it's staked, it just wouldn't take the transport. Um, but that's by arrangement. We've had a chat about it. So there's one on hold and there are some kikis to go with that plant when it when it does finally leave me but it could be a couple of months before that plant's suitable for transport I, I don't see any point in posting a plant that can wobble around in its pot before postman pat starts chucking it around and throwing it in the van and all that sort of stuff it's just not going to do it any good at all and i'd rather take the time and have it arrive in a reasonable state well, that's the theory anyway. Anyway, I will see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. And uh, the little emergency is over. Yeah, we've gone from 10 degrees to 19 degrees in just over half an hour. So it shows the effect of this door. At this time of year, opening the door lets heat out of the house and into the grow room. Yeah? and it just works um, you know as it as it gets light I'm normally up before it gets light anyway um, as it gets light and the plants start responding to the daylight I open this door a little bit and start to raise the temperature and then gradually over the next hour or so I open the door fully now that does drain a little bit of heat out of the house but by then the house is warm so I'm not worried I mean I'm not not one of those that suffers with the cold <laughs> I'm one of those dopey people that, you know, that goes out in the snow in a short sleeve shirt or with my sleeves rolled up and no coat on. I don't feel the cold that much. I'm lucky, you know. Um, I also don't suffer in the heat. I can cope with it. You know, I'm not one of these that wilts and keels over. But I wouldn't like to have to do, you know, heavy manual work in the sort of heat we had last year. That, was, that would be debilitating. Anyway, I will see you next time and uh, thanks for dropping by.